Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Uh, coming to you today from Avila Beach, California, the sunniest beach on the central coast. Uh, Pismo Beach, about seven miles south of here, actually can be socked in fog, but Avila Beach is the place to come for the sun, a uh, favorite beach of mine. Uh, anyway, I want to talk today about what I talked about last time, is what approach, where are you in, in terms of wanting to address dry eye? Are you doing nothing, are you doing something, or are you doing a lot? So if you're doing nothing right now and you want to jump into it, I'll tell you what I did. This is exactly what I did. I looked at the Dry Eye Workshop Guidelines uh, by TFOS, the Tear Film Ocular Surface Society. I looked at their guidelines and said, okay, what I need to do is start looking for some symptoms and some signs and then go based on level of dry eye and look at it that way. There's been an updated version called Deuce 2, the Dry Eye Workshop 2. Uh, I'd say pick one, pick something. So what I did, and what I do is I give all my patients a speed questionnaire, which is a validated dry questionnaire. If you score seven or higher, then we're gonna, we're gonna look at you more closely. So my st the patient will fill out the speed questionnaire in the waiting room. Uh, my staff will then measure zone quick phenol red thread test, a little yellow string you hang here for 15 seconds and it gives you a tear volume measurement. Um, then when they get into the exam room, uh, you use vital dyes, so fluorescein and lysamine green. Take a look at the cornea, the conjunctiva, the tear film breakup time. Um, you can press on the meibomian glands, look at the quality and quantity of meibom that's coming out, uh, and then transilluminate with a pen light. Uh, and I can tell you more about that another time if you don't know how to do that, but you can look it up. It's very easy to do. You put a patient behind the slit lamp, turn off the lights, have them look up, and use your transilluminator to avert the lower lid. You'll see black tiger stripes. So uh, that will give you an idea of what's going on in terms of evaporative aqueous insufficiency amount of each. Uh, and from that, that data, what you can do once you've established uh, symptoms and signs, you can formulate a treatment plan. And you can get this treatment plan based on the dry workshop guidelines. And I'd encourage you to look up the, the updated report, uh, which has the stepwise approach depending on where your patient is. So if they've got mild, it's education and mild intervention. Uh, but you can start what you start what I start doing on that first comprehensive visit even if they come in for a vision plan is I'll start some kind of treatment whether it be education artificial tears uh, a medication etc and then I'll schedule a follow-up and that's the key so diagnose it on the initial exam and then schedule them back and take a look and see how they're doing that speed score of seven will help drive compliance not everybody's gonna do what you say but the more symptomatic they are, the more conviction you have that they're doing, you're doing the right thing, they'll follow that. So you see them back, follow them. Uh, punctal plugs can come into the equation once you clean up the tear film, hot compresses, omegas, etc. So this requires no capital investment on your part. Simply print out a speed questionnaire, tell your receptionist to have patients fill it out. Very few complain. We don't like to hand out forms, but very few complain. Uh, and then take a look with some vital dyes and, and teach your staff how to measure tear volume with the zone quick test. And this is a very easy way to get in and get your feet wet, get some experience, get started, start to get some positive feedback. I know there are challenges. I know there are high deductibles we need to deal about, deal with and co-pays, et cetera. But there's a lot of low hanging fruit. Don't let the exceptions make your, uh, control your decision making process in treating dry eye. So again, very simple, keep it simple. It doesn't take a lot of extra time. I also use uh, uh, patient education handouts, which I've mentioned before, and I've emailed to a bunch of you guys. If you uh, want to get a hold of me, just email me and I'll send you a copy. Or if you go to our Facebook group called OS Docs, O-S-D-O-C-S, uh, you can find it under the files section there. Uh, find it under the files section, uh, the patient question or patient handouts. And I have my staff review my recommendations, schedule a follow-up, and then it's vision insurance on the first visit and then it's medical from there on out once you're looking at trying it.